Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I need to bring you up to speed with my jacket. So in the last video, I placed down the patches and I've since stitched the patches with a combination of straight stitch, rows and rows of it, some cross stitches there and there, and then some whip stitch there. So decided to mix it up a little bit just to add more interest, no other reason. I thought if everything was straight stitch, they might disappear a bit where the more you look, the more you see is sort of what I want to create with this piece. Then I thought I better go to bed. It's been a long day. I've been stitching on this jacket for hours and I came in here to put it down and I just started fiddling again and before I knew it I'd pinned another layer of embellishing on so I thought gosh I better grab the camera switch it on because tomorrow I'll stitch it and then I'm even further afoot and you guys haven't seen what I've been up to so it is about 10 o'clock at night and I've come in here just to I guess catch you up so what I've decided to do is start embellishing with some more crocheted elements. Now, remember this edge on the edge of the jacket here was sitting on the top. I went to stitch it on and I just, for some reason, I flipped it underneath. I just felt that I really liked that edge of the jacket to be seen. It's the classic look. And in doing so, I stitched it all the way down here. I got to here. And I'm like, oh, that was meant to be covering that cut little leaf. Remember the leaf didn't quite have its tip? Well, that we had pinned on the top and it covered it. So that's sort of where I'm at at this point where I wanted to fix that before I went to bed. And I knew in the last video I'd pulled out that little piece of lace. I've still got a little bit of it left. And I'd pulled out this piece of... Uh, trim this little bit of gold bling and I thought well if I put that there and that there bingo I've fixed my um, edge issue and I really like it because by flipping this crocheted piece underneath the jacket and stitching it on in here it um, has sort of given me the opportunity to do something more dainty back up here the other thing in the previous video, I was wanting to add this additional piece of crochet trim. I pinned that on tonight. So it's pinned ready to go. So tomorrow, if I get a chance to sit and stitch, this will be attached over the top of where the first piece was, which finishes just past my, um, there's the underarm seam there. So I'm creeping around the back. Now this piece, when I put the jacket on, this is getting quite bold. It's getting very bold for me. I had up here that cluster of flowers. Remember I pinned it up here under the collar? I just felt like I needed to back away for now. It doesn't mean I won't come up here, but for now I needed to back away from this region and just stay in creating this, I guess, piece of work from this bottom corner up. I still feel like it's something I would wear without getting too, you know, over the top. Now, in the very first video, when I was throwing around the ideas of what I was wanting to make, remember I drew that and then we stitched it? Well, now that I've got a few more things laid down and this piece, which was what inspired that, um, oh gosh, I've got so many pins here, guys. If I survive this video without a pinprick, it'd be great. Love that edge, like, oh, it's so pretty. So, where was I? Let me come up a little bit on the camera. I seem to be fighting myself here in getting ourselves organized. All right, this was up under the collar. I've moved it to here. We stitched that in the very first video. Well, that image has stuck with me a little bit and I've drawn in here, just sketched a rough sketch of some more of those flowers, another two. Then I've tucked one up here and I've tucked one here. I don't know if you can see them, but there's that there, there, there and there. So I'm really liking the idea of having this sketchy 
sketchy image coming through as part of the layers which then brought me to these circular motifs and you know I'm a fan of these motifs and I thought well the girl's just going to start wearing them so I put him in him 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 and this little guy at the very top I love him because he's two-toned so that's where I'm at I then remembered that I had some lace put aside, this really old French lace. So I was like, oh, where do I fit it? Where do I fit it? I'm running out of room. So I end up putting a little piece here to carry on from the squares. So I thought that worked. And at the moment, that's as far as I've got. So, yeah, welcome to my jacket. It's starting to get a little bold, just a little bit. So what I want to do now, that's easy. I can stitch them down after the video. Like, I don't want to waste your time with that. I want to play with these silhouettes. They've got me intrigued. They're either going to work or I will forget about the idea. And that's what I want to explore next. It's just a simple outline. The next thing I want to do is I want to start embroidering my flower. So I've stitched all the way around and I've even stitched right through the belly of it all. So that's all in um, seed stitch in there. I started doing big stitches. You can see them here. Can't decide if I like them. So I ended up just using my cotton from a sewing machine that I was using to stitch it down and seed stitch through there. So they're there holding it, but not a feature yet. These are the ones down here. I don't know. I, I think I might end up pulling them out. What is stopping me from moving? So the plan now is I can just make out the shapes here is to stitch in some of these and just see if I like them. Where's my, my little thimble? Gosh, the top of my finger, guys, is so sore. I have periods of a time where I seem to be really tender and then it comes good and away I go again and then some little injury happens and then it gets tender again. Oh, I'll tell you. I should just wear my thimble all the time and then I wouldn't have these little blips. I've been doing a lot of stitching, so it's only, it's blooming obvious that there's going to be a sore finger, I would have thought. Okay, so let's just see if I like this. I think it's going to add a lovely dimension to the jacket. It's going to soften things. I've been thinking about ways of getting that feminine look back in. Now the center of these flowers, I haven't decided. There's an opportunity to do two things, add a button, which I'm considering and it would be one of those linen buttons but they aren't here they're at the other craft room so I'll have to wait to get my hands on those the other option is to find a flower a small lacy flower that could go in the center of them which I'm sort of tending towards. It's sort of creating a new flower again. But I just don't know. We'll see. I'm loving the bling on it. It's ever so subtle, as is it's sort of tucked on my hemline. It's not blaringly obvious. Whether a little bit of bling will pop up elsewhere, maybe. So I get braver. Gosh, barely got a line here. I'm really freestyling these shapes. But I think there is enough there to give the shape of a flower. 
I think I'll jump over here because I've only got enough thread, I think, to whiz around there. I've even thought about what fabrics I've got with words on it because I really do like words popping onto pieces, sort of really conveying a message within your work. So I just don't know if I've got anything really suitable. Maybe I could stamp something, embroider something. I love how Sarah put on her um, cuff, love. I thought that was a lovely little sentiment to have on the cuff. Words in stitching, you can't underestimate the power of that. What word, where I'd put it, oh, who knows? Is it just a fleeting thought? Could be. Okay, so there's the other petal done. Probably could have started on that other side. Would have probably made it. It's okay. Might try and use the last little bit of cotton to do this petal. Just when I got all the pins out of this piece just to grip it and stitch, I come in here and go and add more doily elements, more crocheted elements and more pins. How far I'm going to go with it in stitching on this jacket, I don't know. I don't think I want it plastered all over me. I, I like the fact that it's just on one side at the moment. I think time will tell as I sort of look at the piece and I guess feel comfortable in the piece. Okay, that's good. I can't really make out that petal on that stitched background. But I didn't want to change colors, you know, bring in other colors. I'm trying to stay in a very simple color palette. As it is, there's a rose there that I'm gonna probably play with and that's probably where I'll head next. Once these, we'll call them layers, fabric crocheted elements, lace are in position. I will then be focusing my attention on the rose and the bird. So I'll be embroidering those to some degree. How much? I don't know. I sort of had an idea of stitching lace into that rose. is floating around in my mind. But I've got a little bit of stitching still to do. So it gives me a bit of time to think about... Um, I just cannot see that petal there but I think once the bead or button or center is there you'll know what it is because there'll be one up here you can see so I think the story will still work is what I'm trying to say okay let's try and get this petal next so that's where i'm at with my jacket i have not started the scarf yet we'll see how the month goes i've got a couple ideas for the scarf what am i going to do there do i go over it yeah i will the one below went over the checked fabric so that's the rule if I've drawn a flower it goes over any fabric element that's below it oh, oh, I 
should go to bed, not be stitching. <laughs> oh, it's a shocker, isn't it? Once you get into a project, it's just like, oh, I just got to finish it. I'm in the process of filming and stitching the next flower for March. Because as you know, I'll be away for a good section of March. So I really need to get the March videos done. And um, I've filmed the first two. So I've sketched the flower. This is for botanical beauties. If you're wondering what the hang I'm talking about, it's a flower per month. To sketch it, paint, and then embroider. Anyway... Everyone's watching the cherry blossom at the moment, but um, I've started filming the next one for March and I've sketched it, painted it, and I was just looking forward to doing the embroidery and then this prompt came out and I thought if it's a really simple little prompt, you know, I might be able to get March done and then quickly do this to be on time for a Saturday and ah, oh, just the week went and this has turned into an epic journey <laughs> so I'm very much up to my neck in denim jackets I just looked at the camera and with the night filming my jacket looks really washed out in that but it's not actually it's a really dark denim you guys are looking at a very pale denim where it's really indigo. It's interesting how light does that. I'm just spin it around, be very careful. There's so many pins. Okay, I must get this out of my head and then I will be able to rest. And if I can get these little guys stitched, I think I'll be comfortable in that my background is done and I can start concentrating on the embroidery of the bird next, which is, you know, riveting viewing. But it'll be put together some browns, some creams, and just follow follow the print of the bird. Don't do anything too, too out there. Just enhance them. Famous last words, hey? How big am I making this petal? It's a rough drawing there. There's actually two, two lines. This will help make it feel a bit busier. It's starting to mould it all together. And I'm allowing it to sneak onto the back just a little bit. There we go. Look at all my stitches. What fun. You can see why when you buy jackets that have been embroidered, they have a lining. They don't want you to see all of their stitching. I'm not too worried. That's what we do, isn't it? I can always add to it then in the future if I go and put a lining on it. That would um, cramp my style. Whoops. All right, so there's those two. Yeah, I like it. Oh, like it, like it, like it. Let's do the next two. Seeing some gorgeous creations pop up on the Facebook site for the Roxy girls. Oh, gosh, clever wearables. Oh, isn't that a deep rabbit hole? Brilliant. I was looking at cuffs. I finally had a moment to go through Pinterest and I typed in stitched fabric um, cuff. Oh, wow. Just wow. I don't think I'd wear them, but there was some that you could nearly wear as bridal. Oh, they were so beautiful. I 
thought, gee, if I was young and going out all the time, dressing up is what I'm trying to say, I would have worn it. I would have made it and worn it. And it had a diamante feature on it. Just beautiful. It was layers of lace and then a pink little lace and then this diamante brooch was the jewel, the centerpiece of the, uh, the cup. And oh my goodness, stunning. about all those cuffs I don't think I'll make a cuff but um, gee I was inspired it's like stop it girl stop looking at ideas another little rabbit hole <laughs> at least I got a bit of a chance of wearing this so far I've been swanning around in the house in it I don't feel like I'm too much of a clown I've got a big mirror. Well, it's actually three mirrors in a row on a wall in my lounge room. So I've been swanning around in front of those mirrors. Do I like it? Do I like it? Yes, I like it. Is it still okay? Yes, it's okay. Oh, talk about self-doubt. Like I'm a confident girl. When it comes to wearing something I've made, oh my goodness, the silly, silly thoughts that pop into my head. I guess it'll be fine until someone goes, where'd you buy that? I mean, it'll be, it'll be scary until someone goes, where did you buy that? And then my confidence will be okay. <laughs> Those stitches have got too big. Just need to back them back a little bit. So let me know in the comments if you're not part of Facebook and you don't post pictures to the group. Let me know in the comments what you, what you decided to make. What was your choice in the end? I think the idea of hair... Um, accessories was a, a lovely idea kids they always loved putting things in their hair didn't they don't they well I did I had this black bow it was velvet with glittery spots on it and I believe I won it or it was a coupon that you collected and sent away and got it I know it was for free and I know I did something. I'm sure it was collect coupons for something. And you sent it away and it came in the mail. And oh gosh, I could not believe that I had this beautiful thing. I've still got it. <laughs> still got it in my little glory box. Black velvet bow on a clip with silver glittery spots on it. You can just picture it, can't you? And every Sunday, I'd have that bow in my hair to go to church. And I just thought I was the ant's pants. But I had the one problem. My hair was so fine. I've got a lot of hair, but it's very fine hair. So whenever I bought clips and things, it just never really sat properly. They would literally fall out. Mind you, I was a tomboy, so... I might have looked the part of a girly girl when I had my bow in my hair, but I was very quick to be running across a paddock, climbing through a fence opposite the church to go and pat the horses in the showgrounds. <laughs> so often the bow would come sliding out. But it was fun. Oh, to be young again, hey? Oh my goodness, I've been thinking about that lately, getting old. <laughs> we won't go there, forget about that. <laughs> Ow, 
see that's oh don't i knew i'd get jabbed it's this one here patient that way okay it's because i'd sat for the day stitching and when i hopped up oh i was so stiff i was so naughty I just sat and stitched. I just didn't, oh, I was just so into it. And then I paid for it when I hopped up. Every time I was like, creep, creep. So I was starting to whinge that I was getting old. I was feeling sorry for myself and one should not. One should be very thankful that they could sit and stitch for the day. It was good because I had no phone calls and like no one bugged me. It was great. There was just no decisions to be made. The world was sliding by and little old girl Corinne was sitting on the couch just stitching. <laughs> like she was back in the 1700s sitting in the parlour stitching. I'm on that side seam and that is tough going. Gosh, I was so nervous when I started with this jacket. And look at me now, I'm just powering through as if it's just a piece of cloth. Which it is. I've just nipped that. I might end that off. Because it's... should technically be going over that piece but Ow. okay thread up again let's get this Final petal. For a second there, I thought I was using the wrong thread. The one that I used on those pieces. That I just stitched it in the wrong cotton, but it's all good. Whew. There was a moment there. I might come over here and work back. Because it feels more natural to go from my right to the left. At least with this little design, if I want to drift elsewhere, let's say to a cuff or something, I can stitch this and it not be too out there. You know, it's not a big lump of fabric, it's not a big doily element, it's just a, where am I going here, what am I doing? Yeah, it's just a simple little line and I could even go smaller and all I'd need to do is drop a few little small flowers in around this zone then I could take that smaller flower elsewhere if I felt like it was a bit big that'd be future stitching if I was so inclined but let's just get this panel on the front done before we get to Far ahead of ourselves hey there we go so that's the that's the flowers stitched let's have a look yeah that's good happy with that so then it's just a case of stitch that down. Looks like it's all connected. That'll be my homework. I won't bore you with that. Now what I do want to do is start filling around with this rose. So we need to get some browns. I 
think I want a pearl cotton because I want it to be quite bold, I think. Do I? Have I got a nice brown? See, I was sort of hoping I had that, but darker. That will be useful, but... Hmm. Sort of not what I had in mind. Let me grab my container of brown threads. Just hold that thought for a moment. Do I have a container of brown threads is the question. Yeah, I do. Okay. Oh, phew. There is something in there. Let's pop that away. Let's have a look in here. Oh, that's better. Really needs to be a real dark chocolatey that colour to be honest mm -hmm. and that one would work okay I don't have much on there don't know if I'd have enough to do the job very thick. Be great on the branch. So let's just try a bit. If it's too thick, maybe I've got to drop back to a stranded cotton where I can control the thickness and break the stranded cotton down into three threads, even two. Because this might be too, needle's not big enough. This might be too thick. So it's thicker than the thread that I did my stitch. Yeah, it's not going to work. Stop, 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 stop. It's a great colour. It's very blendy. You could potentially stitch it all and not see anything because it's just blended too well. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to be a shade or so different. Otherwise you put in all that work and no one will ever see that you were there. Let's have a look at this one. So we've got some leaves. How are we going to do the leaves? Do we do back stitch do we do a stem stitch do we do a running stitch that we whip I'm just going to do a stem stitch to start with sort of want a raised feel to it so when your fingers touch the fabric let me zoom in a bit for you when your fingers touch the fabric you can at least feel an outline of something how much I stitch is another thing because you sort of got a fine line of feeling the thread there I'm destroying the image below unless you're creating a whole new image well that's a different story if you've got a color or a design that you don't like so you're stitching it all in go for it but when you like the image like I do there I want to enhance it I don't want to destroy it and I have a feeling that I need to actually do the veins not the petal or the outline I can see I'm closing it in let's just back up a bit now I'll split the thread it's a bit 
because there's a seam there on the jacket and it's tough to pull through. Okay, let's let's try stitching just the veins. Maybe that's what we gotta do. Okay, might start at the tip. Oh, it's so so dense with fabric. So I can't even do, oh, that's so hard to push the needle through. Gee, it's going to take me a while. It's finding that sweet spot between the layers. I can't even do a fly stitch because when you look at some of the other leaves, fly stitch doesn't work. It would work on this one. So I'm thinking I need to do either the straight down the center and then work my way back through with some, oh, that's so, just bear with me guys. Once I get past this edge, Yeah, I, I either, yeah, what was I saying? Work the vein of the thread first, or the, the leaf, then come back and do these little decorative stitches. Which I think I might actually do the sides of the leaf, then come back with the vein. Oh. I'm going through some serious bulk here. Yeah, I'm not going to outline them because I will lose the daintiness. I'm just going to stitch the centers of the leaves. So that's decided. I might try this time. Once I get through, try and stay. Instead of going right through, just stay slither. That's better. Oh gosh. So I'm just slithering underneath the piece of fabric of the leaf and not pushing back through. Oh, you can't even see. Sorry, guys. You were busy stitching anyway. You didn't even notice, right? So I'm slithering the needle under the fabric. That's way, way better. Once I get past these fabric seams, won't be a problem. Okay, so we've worked out the leaves. That color works for me. That's good because it's just given the leaf a little bit of raised texture. Now I should be able to come back through with the back stitch up the center. That'll just connect it all together. Okay. And some of them will just have little specks. It's just enhancing it, sort of creating a velvety feel to the leaf. I think I'll do that start at the tip, get to the bottom, turn around and come to the back to the tip with the leaf then being completed. Okay. Ow. Goodness sakes. Ow. 
I think the first thing I'll do before I do any embroidery is get this bottom. I'm going to bed tonight. Like, seriously, this is ridiculous. I think tomorrow, if I get time to stitch, I will get this extra layer of lace and all of that on. And then I can embroider comfortably without worrying about being jabbed. Now, I'm just reaching to get my threads. Let's have a look. Where's a tray? Hang on. We're going to need all of them. The bird, I'll follow a similar technique, just picking highlights within him and reinforcing his structure. I might have to drop down to a stranded cotton for him because he's really fine. I can get bold with leaves, but once you start... You might, I might find that I need to be gentle with him. Now this flower, I've got a couple options there, I guess. We can stitch in with some blue. Gee, that's pretty close, isn't it? Goodness. I thought that might be a challenging colour. That's pretty. Pretty good. Well, that's a definite. And then it'll be a case of chocolate, I think. There's no real tonal there, except for the white where the ink hasn't gone into the fabric. Deliberate, I'm sure, but it's given a, a bit of a white fleck. But I'm not going to try and stitch that. I'll just stay with the blue and the chocolate. But what I did want to have a little play with is working in some crocheting to this flower. It's finding the right piece, you know, like that's too big. It's finding the perfect little element. But it's it's got to enhance the rose. It can't be look like it's a foreign object sitting on the rose. Nope. And then that comes to colour. Like if you start looking at colours, see the wrong colour, but the right shape. But we can always tea dye it. It might take me a bit to just go fossicking through all of my bits of lace here to see if there's something that... I'm sure I've got some of this smaller somewhere. It's finding that right little, and does it, that's not bad. It's got potential, you know. It doesn't have to be the whole rose. I'm just looking for those key little pieces to pop in just to lift the rose and make it look a little bit fancier. It's you've got to get that right shape. This petal comes out this way but it also goes out that way so you nearly and this is flat so it's like can you make it sit right then you've got a stitch in that center is it two of these do i not look at the petal itself but create a brand new petal oops So we ignore the petal underneath and we start building our own petal is another way to approach it. And then if we follow the rose and just do that outer edge, then does the center look right now that we've introduced lace to the rose? At what point does the 
printed fabric take back the rose. Don't mind that. Look, I'm going to pin it. And I'm going to think about it. And I think I've got... Let's just pin it. I'm sure sitting over to my side in another container. And I think, see how that slid in under that one? And that one slid under there. I think that's the secret to it as well. They can't be just in a nice lineal row. They don't sit like that in real life. So these little pieces have to also interconnect like petals do. That to me looks better already. Let's bring that one over then that one. I'm just playing, but you never know. From play sometimes comes something. Sort of feel like it needs another petal. So I'm going to pull that up into there and then lay. I haven't used my tatting. Remember I pulled out a piece of tatting I wanted to include? That hasn't been used yet. Maybe tatting now laid in there. And sell the concept of this. Where was the tatting here? Ah, it's too overpowering. That's the little shape. No, but there's some more tatting over here. Hang on, hold the horses. Has that got the right shape? No. Where's the piece that's long that I had in my hand? When you remember, I picked it up and I thought it just didn't. Gosh, yes, here it is. Could that work in there if that then became the gel to connect the two together? I think it'll work. And then embroider the rose. So that would hide all of those connecting elements. Don't mind that, guys. And then embroider the rose. But is it too busy? I don't... Yeah. I think it's getting lost, to be honest. That'd be great embroidered in wool, but dragging wool through this could be, the wool would break down really quickly. So I'm a little, yeah, don't think so. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna file it away as an idea to percolate on. Last thing I need is more pins in there as I stitch these leaves. So we're just going to back it up a little bit. We're going to put those little bits in my tray. Okay, I think I'm right with some homework now. I've got to stitch on all the lace elements. Um, have a think about what I'm going to use there. So I've got in my mind these little layered flowers that are on some of this wedding tool of mine. These, these little guys, they're like the gift that keeps giving. Where's one close to the edge? Here we go. He's been snipped. Whoops, that wasn't me. But we'll take him out. I just feel like we could do something with a little bit of netting. See, it's the start of the pearls appearing on the piece now. 
or beads. I wasn't going down that rabbit hole. No, nope. don't like that. Let's trim it right back. Nope. 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 All right. I've tested that theory. Forget about that. We're not doing it. Now I've dropped lace everywhere. All right. Let's put that away. Oh, hello. What about this from my mum's wedding dress? Oh. Oh, now that holds its own. Oh, wow. Having a moment, guys. I better wear this jacket now. These little guys. Oh. Oh, you can't even see them. Hold it, guys. I'm just snipping out a couple more. Let me go up a little bit. Look. Look. Oh, move everything out of the way. Quick, quick, quick. Oh, I love it. Oh, wow. I love them. The only thing I would say is them being not quite... Oh, so they are the white, right colour because they match the thread. I think it's because the cream is so strong. It's really bouncing out at me and the white stitching everywhere is quite subtle and that's really bringing it out. What I could do is pop some into some tea and just see what they do. I think I could afford to dye a couple. I know I'll use them, like they won't go a crazy color and see if that is something I like. But I must say I do like them. I'm just going to pin them just so that I can look at them as I work on the leaves and the binding, not the binding, these and that and oh, there's heaps to do. It's nice to have them on there, I must say. There we go. Okay, guys, let me zoom up a little bit. Thanks for joining me. I really feel weary now. I, I think I've done my dash. <laughs> I think it's time for rest. And I've got plenty to work on tomorrow. Yep, great. Happy with that. All right, guys, have a lovely day, evening, whatever it may be. I'm going to have some sleep. <laughs> I am going to turn off the brain and rest. Very happy. All right, guys, look after yourselves and I shall see you in the next video. Bye.